Now, the pressure to publish journal articles when you haven't even finished your PhD yet is something you could do without. It really is. You've got a lot of stuff going on, both PhD related and not PhD related. So the idea of writing for publication can feel impossible. You're still figuring it all out. You're still secretly feeling like you are winging it. You really don't know what you're doing. No one does, it's not just you. And people are already asking you, so when are you submitting to a journal? And you're just like, oh, go away. But here's the good news. Your PhD already contains a lot of publishable material. You just need to recognise which bits can stand alone and reframe them. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through six ways that you can turn chunks of your PhD into journal articles. If we've not met before, hi, I'm Dr Elizabeth Yardley, and I am here to help you finish your PhD by doing something quite simple, taking it one step at a time, identifying the next thing you need to do, just the next thing you need to do, and then doing it, and not worrying about the 50 steps that come after it, because, well, we'll worry about that then. And I am here to help you identify the next step. And if that's developing a journal article, you're in the right place. As I said, I've got six ideas to share with you today. The first three are slightly more obvious ones, but with a twist. The next three are a little bit more creative. So let's get into it. First up, your literature review. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, who's going to want to publish my literature review? Who's going to want to publish just a summary of other people's work? And you're right, if it's just a summary, probably no one, because boring. But if your literature review is doing something critical, identifying a gap, challenging dominant ideas, or showing how two areas of research just aren't talking to each other, and they should be talking to each other, then you've got a publishable article. For example, say your PhD is about youth homelessness and mental health. You notice that most studies look at them separately or treat mental health as a side effect or a consequence of homelessness rather than something central. And you're like, the literature's got this the wrong way around. That is your argument. So you might start writing something like, despite high rates of mental health issues among young people experiencing homelessness, research rarely explores this intersection in depth. This literature review critically examines how these two areas have been siloed and proposes a more integrated agenda. Boom, that is a publishable literature review. You've got a gap, you've got a critique, you've got a direction. Next, and this is a fun one, your theoretical framework. Yeah, I know, the term theoretical framework and the word fun don't often go hand in hand, but they can. That can be a thing. Theory sections, theory chapters, they often feel like the bits of our PhD that we just have to get through. Ah, theory, right? But if you've done something interesting, reflective, or a little bit rebellious with theory, that could be an article. Especially if your PhD is interdisciplinary and you've combined theories that aren't usually put together, or you've used a theory in a completely new context where it's never been applied before, then you've definitely got something worth saying, something that other people are going to want to know about. For example, let's say you're using Bourdieu's ideas on cultural capital in a study of mature students, but your participants just don't fit the framework. Their experiences might challenge the categories and the concepts that Bourdieu laid out. So you could begin writing something like this. While Bourdieu's theory of cultural capital has been widely applied in education research, this study suggests its limitations in capturing the experiences of older working class learners navigating higher education in later life. That is a theory led paper that's got the potential to move that field forward. Okay, so this one's a bit of a classic, but it still surprises quite a lot of people. Yes, your findings are publishable, but not all at once. Journal articles are short. Your thesis is long. Trying to cram all of your findings into one paper is like trying to cram a duvet 
into a pillowcase. It's not going to fit and you're going to end up in a mess. Instead, choose one strong theme, one clear message, one distinct part of the puzzle that you can explore in depth. For example, let's say that your thesis explores how hospital nurses manage emotional labour. In other words, how they deal with the pressure to stay calm and kind and professional, even when they are exhausted, upset or facing really difficult situations. From your research, you might have several themes. Boundary setting, patient attachment, peer support, institutional pressure. Pick one. Let's say peer support. You could write a whole article just on that one theme on how nurses lean on each other and rely on each other to cope with those emotional pressures of the job. Think chats in the break room, the WhatsApp group, or quiet check-ins after a tough shift, and link that to big picture ideas about resilience at work, about peer support at work, or how care isn't just something that's given to patients in a hospital setting, it's something that staff give each other too. That's a whole paper, that's a publishable paper. And you've still got those other three themes. You've got three more potential papers sitting right there. Now, next up, we're going to look at three ideas that you might not have considered before. But before we get onto that, I wanna hear from you in the comments. If you haven't published anything from your PhD yet, is that something you're going to do soon? Have you thought about what you might publish or where you might publish? And if you've already published something from your PhD, what did you publish? And as ever, more importantly, if you have already published from your PhD, what advice would you give to members of our community here who haven't published anything yet? What do you wish people would have told you at the beginning of that process? Now, you can tell them about Reviewer 2 if you like. This is a supportive environment and they need to know about Reviewer 2, so I'll let you break that to them. Anywho, moving on. Now we're getting into the more unexpected stuff, like reflecting on your research journey. If you're doing qualitative, participatory or critical work, then your actual experience of doing the research can become data in itself. You are part of the research story. And this can be especially interesting if you shifted quite significantly from what you initially proposed to do, if your research brought up some really strong emotions or some identity related stuff that was quite existential in nature, or if your research involved researching with your own community or your own workplace or former workplace or something like that. You've got material there for a reflective or autoethnographic article. I love that word, autoethnographic. And essentially what that means is using your own personal experiences to explore a bigger social, cultural or political issue. Think of it as saying, well, here's what happened to me and here's what that reveals about the world we live in. So instead of pretending that the researcher is some detached, objective, neutral robot, autoethnography says, no, they are in this, the research is their story too. Let's say you are a first generation working class university student and you are doing your research on first generation working class university students. You might draw on your own journey. The moments you felt that you didn't belong, the subtle snubs and exclusion and the pressure. And you might use that as a lens to look at wider patterns of exclusion in universities, in higher education. It's honest, it's reflective, it's powerful. And when it's done well, it can offer a really fresh, unique perspective. And these kind of journal articles are so useful for others who are doing similar research. And they often get cited a lot in methodology papers. Never dismiss what you're bringing to the table, what you're bringing to the party. You can actually publish that stuff. Next up, ethical dilemmas. Now, this isn't the tick box, this study received ethical approval type stuff, here's the reference number. I'm talking real on the ground ethics here. The kind of thing that hits you halfway through your fieldwork, halfway through your data collection, when a participant kind of throws something completely unexpected at you. Or when your research plans suddenly feel morally questionable. You know, the whole 
oh, oh my goodness, what do I do now? <laughs> if you navigated a tough ethical moment and you reflected on that seriously, that could absolutely become a publishable reflection or a short commentary. For example, say you're interviewing young people about housing and one of them confides in you that they're staying somewhere that is not safe. You hadn't anticipated this. What do you do? Do you intervene? Do you refer? If you do that, are you breaking some kind of trust with the participants, some kind of boundary? How do you balance participant safety, the role of the researcher, institutional processes, not to mention the law? So a paper with this kind of title could be so helpful to other researchers, especially early career researchers or researchers who are starting to work with the group that you've worked with for the first time. And there are some journals who absolutely love thoughtful reflections like this because they show maturity, they show the gritty reality of ethics in the field. And finally, number six, and this one might be my favourite. Publish something with your fellow PhD students. Yes, even if you're working on completely different topics. Because even if you're all focusing on very different topics, you might find that there's a similar theme that keeps coming up for all of you. A broader, wider theme, like resistance or identity or inequality or emotion in research. You could co-write a short article around that theme on how your different disciplines or strands approach that issue, on how you've all made sense of that in different or similar ways. Let's say three of you are doing qualitative PhDs in different fields. Education, criminology, public health. Perhaps you've all used semi-structured interviews and you found them messy. You could write a joint paper around that. This is powerful stuff. Journals love early career voices coming together around things like this. And it makes publishing feel less lonely because you're doing it alongside your colleagues. So instead of trying to publish your whole thesis in one go, start small. One slice, one angle, one idea. If you found this video helpful, you might like the one popping up on your screen right now. It's all about how to cut down your words if you've got a tendency to overwrite. Are you several thousand words over the word count? If so, that's fine, that's normal, and we can fix that. So go and check that out, I'll see you in there.